Hunt Down the Freeman is bad, everyone knows that. People love to make fun of it for fairly obvious reasons. The gameplay is angering and sometimes outright unfair. He's still shooting me, dude! The story is bland and poorly conveyed. The maps are way too open and featureless, glitches hide around every corner, and above all, it is an insult to Half-Life and first-person shooters. I agree with all of these complaints, but by my nature, I am an optimistic person. As boring and as frustrating as this game is, I, I will admit that, very rarely, I had fun. I will also admit that I may be a little biased, because I bought this game on sale for $2, and I had a friend in Discord with me while I played it. Both factors inevitably affected my enjoyment of the game. I can only imagine what it must have been like for players on launch day, paying $25 for this game and playing it by themselves to wallow in self-pity. But I digress. I will do my absolute damnedest to try and squeeze out every last drop of positivity this game has to offer before I start shitting on it. I may hate this game just as much as the next guy, but I stand by the fact that Hunt Down the Freeman is not a 100% worthless gaming experience. With that being said, this is Deep Fried Beans, and let's get into it. Party Rockers in the House. It's Party Rockers. Part 1. Obligatory game background so less people are confused. In Hunt Down the Freeman, you play as definitely not Solid Snake, colloquially known as Mitchell Shepard. DNSS is one of the Marines assigned to Black Mesa after they experience their infamous f***y wucky. One day, you're just minding your business, and an HEV suit wearing Florida man with a crowbar beats you up, leaving you clinging to life. You assume the person in the suit is Gordon Freeman, and you swear to kill him at all costs. After you pass out, the G-Man appears and makes you a cryptic deal, the specifics of which are unimportant. All you really need to know is that Definitely Not Solid Snake is now one of G-Man's employees. As for the gameplay, it's mostly like Half-Life 2. You can run, shoot, jump, drive, and pick up things. This game also features a set of parkour mechanics that let you climb and mantle walls and poles. You can also go prone and slide. Hunt Down the Freeman takes place across three acts, the first of which takes place during the Seven Hour War, where you fight the Combine and weird green metal aliens to survive. The second act takes you to Alaska, three years after the Combine invasion. The second act focuses more on stealth than the other acts, featuring enemies you can't kill that require skill or dumb luck to maneuver around. The third act is kind of all over the place, taking place at about the same time as Half-Life 2. Each act took me about three hours, so you're looking at about eight to ten hours to complete the game. I know the Steam page says it'll take 14 hours, but come on, if I can complete it in nine hours, you probably can too. Now that that's out of the way, can I talk about my opinion now? Impossible. Part 2, Hunt Down the Positivity. Hands down, my favorite thing this game has to offer is its music. The menu music and the opening cutscenes music in particular just blew me away with how excellent they were. I don't know jack shit about music composing, so all I can really say to praise it is that I thought it sounded really good. For example, in the opening cutscene, a song called Pain of the Secret plays that expertly combines guitar picking, violin, and vocals. Something about how well the instruments and the vocals meshed sent chills down my spine. Good chills, not bad chills. While editing the script, I listened to Pain of the Secret on repeat because it reminded me that all video games are art. Even Hunt Down the Freeman is art, and this song perfectly illustrates why. Pain of the Secret is an amazing song that has no business being this phenomenal, and it's from the Hunt Down the Freeman soundtrack, no less. Talk about unfitting. Since there hasn't been a commercial release of the soundtrack, the in-game tracks don't have names, only numbers. Overall, the in-game music is definitely a step down from the god-given masterpiece that is Pain of the Secret, but some tracks are pretty great in their own right. Some had pretty sick electric guitar riffs, which you guys should know I'm a sucker for. I commend the game's composer, Paul Humphrey for crafting a great soundtrack for a not-so-great game. Another thing that becomes apparent as you play the game is that the cutscenes are pretty well animated. The quality of the lip-syncing on the characters is mostly very good, the camera placement is done very well. And, as Pyrocynical wisely stated, The cutscenes are actually a major highlight of the game, mostly because when you're watching them, you don't have to play the game. Although at some points, I think I saw some hints of recycled animations. Oh shit, I'm sorry. Positives. Next, the weapons are, for the most part, fun to use and modeled well. Especially the shotguns. Every gun in the game is new, and in no way are any of them carbon copies of guns from Half-Life 2. That's gotta count for something, right? Relating to the weapons, some 
And again, I repeat, some combat sections were fun to play for me personally. There's this part in Act 1 where you call an elevator and while you wait, you have to fight waves of headcrab zombies. Maybe it's just me, but running around that hotel lobby fighting hordes of zombies with Mozzie's super shorty was just heaps of fun. I guess now we know who took it from him. I feel horrible comparing Hunt Down the Freeman to far superior games, but that elevator lobby fight gave me mild, mild, mild doom vibes. And there was also a level later in Act 3 where you're dismembering zombies in a gloomy forest with a double-barreled shotgun. I found that endlessly enjoyable. Maybe I just have low standards or something, I don't know. People who say good things about this thing probably got it for free, or maybe they know someone involved with the development team and don't want to hurt their feelings. Or maybe they just have incredibly low standards. OH SHIT THAT'S ME! A tiny positive that I think is a neat little cherry on top is the glitches. Well, the ones that were funny, not the ones that impeded my completion of the game. <laughs> The glitches are not only a cherry on top, but they're also a part of a large cherry basket, simply titled Ignorance. Sure, oversight on important shit isn't fun or engaging, but mostly when I encountered blatant ignorance in this game, it was overwhelmingly hilarious. <laughs> I needed to know. <laughs> some of you may disagree with me on this, but I believe the voice acting can be considered a positive at some points. And I'll talk about the exceptions in the negative portion, just you wait. Anyway, the voices of Mick Lauer and I Hate Everything, voicing Mitchell Shepard and Nick respectively, both did an excellent job voicing their characters. Even though the lines they were delivering weren't scripted very well, they still put a lot of effort into making them sound decent. Mitchell Shepard also holds the title of having said the best line in the game, the classic, You, you fucked, fucked up my face. Face. Which leads me to my next point, the second best line in the game. My mother is dead? Said by the Giga Chat himself, Larry. You might die, but it's a sacrifice I am willing to make. Larry is a soldier that accompanies you through a short one off sequence where you fight zombies and press a button. Every time you run into him, he says something mildly suggestive. And I'm sorry, but hearing- Ooh, don't touch me there. As you're firing hot lead into head crab zombies was just so funny to me. I don't care that you're taken! Shoot these zombies! Again, the voice acting definitely has its downsides, and I'll be talking about that later. Uh, the environments and lighting were also kind of cool at some points. Look guys, I'm running out of positives here. Oh, oh, the final thing this game is going for it is that it's literally a meme game. No one buys Hunt Down the Freeman to have a wholesome gaming experience. People buy Hunt Down the Freeman because they are either A, a masochist, or B, just someone looking to get a laugh at a broken ass game. I was option B when I bought it, and if you look at it through the same lens I did when you play it, you'll probably have more fun. What are you doing here? I hate everything. <laughs> Shouldn't you be reviewing a movie? <laughs> Embrace the insanity. Become one with it. Then, and only then, will you truly hunt down the Freeman. That being said, I still think the game is pretty shit. Part 3, Hunt Down My Fucking Sanity. Let me preface this section with an interesting comparison I thought of. Hunt Down the Freeman is to Half-Life as Shark Tale is to DreamWorks. <laughs> At least Hunt Down the Freeman was a fan game and not part of Valve's actual catalog. Ah! Easily the worst part of this game is fucking Act 2. I know in Pyrocynical's Hunt Down the Freeman video, he literally said the same thing. But damn it, if that isn't the truest thing I've ever heard, I'm the queen of fucking England. Remember earlier how I said that part 2 takes place in Alaska? Now you think that'd be cool, right? Navigating a frozen landscape, lamp in hand, the wind blowing you left to right as you slowly hike towards an uncertain end. It's not that cool. In Act 2, you essentially spend upwards of an hour total just running through a mountain range with absolutely nothing to do. The other two hours playing this act are spent doing the exact same thing, but in addition, you're also dying every 10 minutes from bullshit enemies like varying sniper towers and f***ing orbital strikes. Gotta give the game credit where it's due though, because you feel like Neo if you manage to dodge a strike. I just juked a satellite, dude! How awesome is that?! <laughs> yeah, your eyes aren't deceiving you. You can dodge an orbital strike. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> These two hours I mentioned earlier where you're dealing with sniper towers and orbital strikes is literally just trial and error, the video game. And to make things worse, kill barriers are extremely common in Act 2, so good luck weaving in and out of sniper sites while also staying out of range of orbital strikes while also avoiding obtusely placed kill barriers. The unholy trinity of fuck you and your entire existence. And everything I mentioned here isn't even the real reason I hate this act more than the others. The reason I absolutely loathe this act is because the entirety of it could have easily been conveyed through a cutscene. You think all this could have been covered in a cutscene or something like that? Why do I have to be doing all this? Yeah. <laughs> It would be so much better just to show Mitchell himself just no-clipping past everything <laughs> in a cutscene. Well, at the end of the act, you break into a combine factory and blow it up, and that wouldn't do well as a cutscene. Hi! But literally everything else, trekking through the mountains, getting to that factory in the first place, holds no bearing on the story at all. It is quite literally useless. Its only purpose is to piss me off beyond all rational thought could allow. Just show like a 20 second montage of Mitchell fighting the cold winds and dodging the threats. That's all we needed! Whew. Act 2 was a doozy. While Act 2 is undoubtedly the worst, Acts 1 and 3 don't necessarily get off scot-free. Act 1 is a lot of fluff in its story, but at least I would not consider most of it cutscene worthy. I wasn't sticking this up my ass. My major gripe with Act 1 is a level near its end, in which you have to navigate a barge with shipping containment units on it, and get to a ship that's docked on the barge. Easy, right? Nope. Not in the slightest. To start with, the barge is massive, about the size of Hawaii's main f Island. Also, the only decorations or props on this barge are the aforementioned shipping crates and also some random cranes and shit. This essentially makes every square inch of the barge look exactly the same. And to make navigating it worse, on the periphery of the barge, every 100 yards, the same large red boat is docked. And guess where you have to go to complete the level? A large red boat. Not that any of this is ever told to you in the first place anyway. All you really know when you first play this level is that you're on a barge and you need to get off it. So all the boats you see become a point of interest to you. Another droll part of Act 1 is when you're given this weird armored Humvee that you can drive but also shoot from the mounted gun on it. Damn, Mitchell must have those titan legs. In this section, there's a level that's one of the most confusing levels in any video game I've ever played. You enter the area, and there's so much stuff around here that essentially all you can do is explore until you find where you need to go. This highway exit here is blocked by an invisible wall, so it can't be here. The storage room has nothing in it. It can't be here. This building's doors won't open, so it can't be here. Eventually, you'll enter this factory-looking building and kill zombies, but then you're tossed back out, still having no idea where to go. So you check everywhere you've been to see if the invisible walls were removed. Nope, nope, nope. Yes, there's a hole in the wall here with hunters inside! This leads you to the top of the building, where you fight some enemies and then go back down, so what was the point? Eventually, I did something that lifted the invisible wall, but I really couldn't tell you what it was if I tried. Y'all pray for me. Uh, okay. Um... Never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind, we don't have time to pray, Noah, we don't have time to pray. I think pray. I prayed to the wrong god. <laughs> Oddly, I'd say Act 3 is my favorite act in the game, because it only has one area where I had absolutely no idea how to progress. This city square area right here. You start around a line of citizens being guarded by Combine, which looks important, so you wait in line. Jack shit happens, so you examine the walls nearby for anything of importance. You then notice a dimly lit alleyway. You follow it until it ends, reveal nothing of substance. You repeatedly cycle between these two areas, trying to find something, anything, to get you to the next area. There's a door with a black interior that looks like a level transition that isn't. There's multiple poles scattered around, tricking you into thinking you can climb them. And to top it all off, a metro cop is blocking a fenced off area that is just begging to be explored. But nope, lure the metro cop away and there's an invisible wall there. It took me nearly 15 minutes to find where you're supposed to go. An open window and a long stretch of the dimly lit alleyway, where the last place you're looking is up. So that was cool. Also, after going through the window, the game literally puts you out right behind the metro cop guarding the fenced off area, so... Fuck me, I guess. I think I've complained enough about the shoddy level design. Let's talk about the characters in the story. 
Remember when I talked about the positives associated with the voice acting? Here is where it all goes downhill. If you're at all familiar with this game, you probably already know that f***ing Keemstar voices the president of the goddamn United States. Because I watched Pyrocynical's video review before I played this game, I knew it was coming before it happened. But, my friend in Discord didn't. This is the best chance for our- Oh my god, this is Keemstar! Yeah! And as humans- I just- Keemstar is the president of the United <laughs> of my life and I did not do so much. This is the as worst thing that has ever happened. It's bad enough as a drama channel, but now he's the president. Like, this is supposed to be a sad part, right? Every character has a solemn look on their face, and the score in the background sounds like it's from a funeral scene. Everything about this cutscene is telling the player that this is a sad moment, a time of defeat. But Keemstar's voice sticks out like a sore, broken thumb. And hell, I might be able to stand it if he delivered his lines well. But he doesn't. Maybe that's just the fault of the scriptwriter or something, but but this whole ordeal rubs me in the wrong way. Not like Larry, who rubs me in a good way. Moving away from the train wreck that is what you just saw, the dialogue is spotty and cringy. Some parts in particular feel like one person wrote them without anyone to tell them that's not how human beings speak. But what about the story? It's... weird. The way this game goes about telling its story is very... unorthodox. Most of the time, the game doesn't acutely explain what is happening to the player very well. At one point, you're in a copy-and-pasted City 17, and the game has made it clear to you previously that you're following Gordon Freeman to kill him. The thing is, a plan isn't laid out per se. You jump on a train, show up in City 17, and interact with a citizen to proceed. You follow him, and you tell him, goodbye, old friend, and then he walks in and f***ing explodes! Excuse me, what? Why was this necessary to hunt down Freeman? Please, Royal Rudius, I need answers! The only reason I can think of to do this would be to draw Combine to that area, but isn't that completely pointless if Mitchell is there with him? Knowing the Combine, they would interrogate everyone within a five-mile radius to determine the cause, and they'd especially question the only person in the vicinity that survived the blast. They wouldn't just let him ride on through like they do in the game. <sighs> Breathe, Jackson, breathe. It's just hunt down the Freeman. It's just hunt down the Freeman. Now, take everything I just said and apply it to the entire plot. The story is just so confusing and unclear, and you'll understand what I mean if you know how it ends. I won't spoil it just in case. Watch Pyrocynical's video if you really want to know. So, what is the final thing wrong with this game? Stealing assets from other games. This isn't something that particularly got on my nerves, but I feel this review would be incomplete without mentioning it. Rumors say that the creators of this game stole assets from other titles, such as lighting from Black Mesa, running animations from Payday 2, and some entire maps from Half-Life 2. That's kind of not hard to see. I can't make heads or tails of this because this compilation of stolen assets seems legitimate, but the developer responded with another dude's comment, saying, This game is bad for many reasons. Unless proof can be provided, stolen assets are not one of them. Upon further review, I noticed a case made by the developer that they purchased rights to use these assets, so that's fine, I guess. It still doesn't stop the game from looking like it was made by a 13-year-old learning how to create maps in Gary's mod. Alright, that just about does it for the negative side of the game. Everything else you you probably know or have heard about already. You so fucking precious when you smile. Part 4, Concussion, I mean Conclusion. So I think we can safely say by now that Hunt Down the Freeman is bad. It's confusing, cringy, frustrating, and its ignorance astounds me. Indeed, it is a bad game. But did I have fun playing it? abso fucking lootly This is true in part to my friend Noah and my brother Max, who accompanied me in Discord while I played it. This alone raised the fun bar many tiers upward, and I thank them for making this experience all the more enjoyable and hilarious. In my humble opinion, if you want to play this game by yourself, go for it, but I think the true Hunt Down the Freeman experience lies within having a gaggle of your friends in the background to laugh with you. Otherwise, like I said earlier, it's just kind of sad. It's like watching The Room unironically. Stop. So please, grab this certified deep fried beans hunt down the frame of checklist and go have some fun. Also, for those that are interested, I'm probably going to compile the funniest moments that happened while I was playing Hunt Down the Freeman and upload that video separately. So if what you saw in this video interests you, the subscribe button is right there. Just saying. Don't worry, I'll review some good games soon to balance it out.